I would like to start by sharing an excerpt of a political poem of mine called Do Nothing. Do nothing, let it be. You will not change what you cannot see. Our nation is perfect, my nation is free. When you see resistance, I see anarchy. Obviously, this poem of mine is the exact opposite of what I want to tell you. What did Dr. King, Orwell, Gandhi, and pretty much everyone else that we admire in the textbooks or news have in common? They did something, and we can too. There is sense in truth, there is sense in doubt, in reading, in writing, in doing something. All of this learning and fighting back is called activism. And I don't know about you, but I am tired of sitting on the sidelines, and I will refuse to do nothing. I first dipped my toes into activism when I was 12, and finally ended an internet argument by leaving it, and decided I wanted to do something bigger. Long story short, I created Write for Your Rights, a letter writing campaign for the American Civil Liberties Union of Virginia, and it was a huge success. Then, I created Constitution Day, another event similar to the last, and faced some problems I wasn't prepared for. There's less people, I had less money raised, and I, my perfectionist self naturally had a feeling of uh, regret, worthlessness even. And on top of all of that, my peers were doing everything they could to stop me, from reporting my Facebook account because I was uh, three months too young, to calling me names like communist or retarded. I was down, but I got back up. I kept fighting, I kept doing something, and I wanna help you learn to fight as well with my fundamentals of activism. First, with activism, you recognize. You recognize yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, your traits, your roles, your skills, your interests, and your privilege too. Whether it be of race or of class or just the access to clean water, recognize that you have it. Recognize that many of us are children, but we aren't just children. Recognize the planned obstacles put in our path to keep us from doing something, but recognize that we will do something anyway. Recognize. If I had done this, I would have been prepared for my perfectionist face plant. Recognize if you're an introvert, if you're bilingual, if you like STEM, if you're um, an adult, if you're a child, if you're employed, even if you're just more of an indoors person. Whatever it is, recognizing it will help you understand how activism relates best with you in the future. Which leads you to the next step, individualize. Activism comes in so many different forms. You have to work with it instead of for or against it. If you can work with activism, activism will work with you. Start with the what. Ask yourself, what do I want to change? Your answer here, whether it be the criminal justice system or CO2 emissions, will help you understand um, what your cause is as well as your limits or lack of them. Another way to do this is to create a Venn diagram of your skills and interests. And in the middle of the diagram lies your individualized what of activism. Next, the how. How are you specifically going to fight? The most basic categorization for this is something I call the art and science of activism. The art, to put it simply, is creation and expression. Writing, drawing, painting, journalism, poetry, music, reading too, all activism. I used to completely underestimate the humanities, but now, after reading Orwell and writing first-person opinion pieces for rvamag.com, I understand the importance of art and the written word. And what I've learned is that the art adds personality to politics, something it so desperately needs. And the science of activism is what it sounds like. When you think, when you think science, you think problems and solutions. You think data and numbers, spreadsheets and polls. The science of activism is practically endless, and no change could happen without it. After you've recognized and individualized, you move from preparedness into action and utilize. Use your tools, privilege, and teamwork to your cause's advantage. For tools, whether they be as deep as motivation for a personal reason, or as simple as a means of transportation, or even just a stapler, they are crucial. First, find out what you have. Then, how to use it. Then, how to get more of it. And privilege. You've recognized it. Now you need to use it. Remember to lift others up and not drown them out. And teamwork. All I can say is that you need it. Would Dr. King have gone as far as he did, if anywhere, without the thousands of citizens who had his back? No way. That's why I formed TAG RVA, the Teen Advocacy Group of Richmond, which is just a small group of my friends that comes to my house every week to talk action and eat pizza. Teamwork is where ideas, motivation, and reality comes from, so our group is expanding to let any other teenager create their own, which only requires a time frame, a venue, and people to come to it.
We are human, many of us children. If we think we are naive and worthless, then we may as well be. But if we see past our self-doubt, if we understand ourselves, if we understand activism, and if we read, if we write, and if we fight like hell, nothing can stop us.